Warning. Geesebumps is a comedy podcast based on the works of R.L. Stein. Any similarity to an actual literature podcast is coincidental and unintentional. Listener beware, you're not in for a scare. Blood, blood, everywhere. While staying with his weird great aunt Catherine, Evan visits a funky old toy store and buys a dusty can of monster blood. It's fun to play with at first, and Evan's dog, Trigger, likes it so much, he eats some. But then Evan notices something weird about the green slimy stuff. It seems to be growing, and growing, and growing. And all that growing has given the monster blood a monstrous appetite. Welcome to Geesebumps, a Did You Mean Goosebumps podcast. I'm Danielle. I have a PhD. I'm Jojo, and I have a PhD. I'm Jeff, and I have a drinking problem. <laughs> what are you even drinking? Water. I just drink too much of it. I'm too hydrated. I don't know. Like, I'm worried about the amount of PP that I go. Like, it's more inconvenient. <laughs> To me now, and like it's inconvenient to me now, and I'm in home. I'm at home for the most part, so it's like not like we're out in public, or I have to like pull over to the little boys' room. But like I don't know, I feel like I'm getting used to this new lifestyle where I can just go pee pee whenever I want to. And then you don't want to. Yeah, and I don't want because it's not fun. I will say the amount of times that I've been driving down the freeway, and I see like next little boys' room, 48 miles. You panic yeah. a little. I do panic a little because I'm like, well, how am I going to what happens if I have to do my business? That Especially, needs to be like, I, what if it's an urgent poo? Yeah, that's that needs to be between both me and the Lord. If I do it outside of the little boys room, who knows what could happen? Squirrels could eat it. Squirrels could eat it. We're talking about a book. Right. You know which one it is. It's monster blood. It's the start of a legacy. It's the start of a tradition. There's four of these, and there's four of these main. Uh, uh, main there's main four books. mains. Yeah. What? And yeah. then there's like three side books. Yeah. Ugh. This basically started. This is the first of the. Uh, this is the Iron Man. This is the Iron <laughs> Man. When you think about the Avengers of Goosebumps, it's Monster Blood, yeah. the Haunted Mask, yeah. Slappy, and. Uh, I don't know, leaving kids alone with, with families that they don't like. You've heard of the MCU? This is the MBU, the Monster yeah, Blood Universe. They're both drenched in testosterone. Yeah, they are. Testosterone. The, 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 uh, the chemical that makes me throw things. Yes, correct. Yes. All, f all football players have it. Well, And baseball players. Seeing as I have lost my copy of Monster Blood on several occasions, I, I lost it, and then I lost it again. That's... It's mysterious. That's pretty good. No, at that point, that's a pattern. That's the book no, trying no, to run away no, from no, you. No, no, yes, no, yes, no. Yes, yes, yes. Three times is a pattern. No, three times is the rule of comedy. Three times is a lady. <laughs> so why don't, you, why don't you jerks give me a one-minute synopsis okay. of this wonderful, wonderful program? All right, I'll go first this time. Do it. Okay, here's what this book is about. Kid buys a dusty thing of monster blood in a dusty toy store from a that grumpy old man takes it home turns out it starts growing then his dog is a dipshit and eats it then his dog starts growing then he's just wrestling mostly with where to put the growing amount of liquid at various times because what it is really about is <laughs> and puberty I'm gonna cut the in part you know that <laughs> what? why because I'm gonna be talking about a lot of so you're going to have to That's do a lot of cutting. That's wild to me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know why? Because you're a dude and you don't see it. Uh, it's all I see. I see it all the time. I saw it earlier, as a matter of fact. You don't see it in the mirror, baby. That's also not That's true. That's specifically where I see it. That's where I see it most of the time. <laughs> the only actually. time that I can see it because it's the only way that I can make it happen. 
<laughs> and that's time. <laughs> okay, cool. You did not get into anything of what happens in this book. None of okay. I no, covered wait, everything. That's it. No, you you that's it. I covered everything except the twist. Jeff. Ready? Go. All right. This is Monster Blood. This is a book. You can find it in paperback online <laughs> or on Audible. It's about a young man who's been who's been abandoned again by family members to stay with somebody who's funky and weird. Right. Uh, he happens upon the only other child in this town that isn't mean to him. He happens upon some monster blood, which is basically Gak. And then he takes it home, plays with it. it dog eats it. Dog gets bigger. He runs into some bullies. Uh, turns out that the cat that his aunt has that uh, shows up twice in the book is a pivotal figure because it's a witch. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's 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 and it's it's the M Night Sh Shyamalan twist at the end where we this is the reason that the monster blood happened. The M Night Meowalan, if you will. Was that my time? You had four seconds. I love you all. <laughs> good luck and good night, <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Brown. Okay. Indeed, yes. so, so I'm just gonna try and do a legit actual synopsis. Here's the story of Monster Blood. Give it to me. Evan is being dropped off at his great aunt Catherine's house because her mother is traveling to Atlanta. He's got his dog Trigger. He decides, I'm going to go check out this neighborhood, see what it's about. He meets Andrea, who goes by Andy. They go to the toy store. They're looking at different things that they can get. And he finds a dusty old can of monster blood, a miraculous substance. She takes it home. And like Jeff said, works a lot like Gak. Gives some to his dog. It's on accident. The dog eats it. And then he just tries to live his life in this horrible neighborhood. He gets beaten up by the Beamer twins for no particular reason. Also, he started noticing that his dog started growing extra large as a result of, we're going to guess, eating the monster blood because that's the name of the book. He starts realizing that the monster blood is becoming uncontrollable. Finally, him and Andy decide, let's take it back. The toy store is closed. It devours the evil Beamer twins. And we don't feel bad about that. And then it devours Great Aunt Kathy which again, don't feel bad about that. And then the cat transforms into the girl from Brave, who is a witch. And as it turns out, she's been controlling Great Aunt Catherine for years, when all of a sudden, Trigger, who is now as big as a pony, runs in and knocks the witch into the monster blood, which causes her to die instantly, <laughs> even though the Beamer twins were in there, not dead. And the curse is lifted. Everything's cool. And that is monster blood. That is my book report. Yep. I would like... All the gold stars. So I've got the ending, which is full of Buck Wild. Okay, shh, you want So Danielle, you you got the you got the beginning. No, I have the middle. You get the middle. Oh, Joe has the Joe has the beginning. Yeah, but we can't do that yet. No, I can't. I can't talk about my section. You know why? Why? Because we we have a very special guest. Oh, really? We brought a guest. Now, maybe? if you'll excuse me, I I have to go, and I have I have to go. I the have bathroom? to go. The mirror is in the bathroom. Yeah. The mirror is in the bathroom. Yes, I'll be back later. Bye. Oh, the door shut. Jojo left. Did you order something? I don't. I don't. Shut the blinds. Yeah. They're very cold. Oh, God. Oh, oh God. Him. I know who it Why is. Why is he? <sighs> Hold on. Let me open the door. Get the oh, oh, thank you so much. Oh, it is so cold out there in oh. August. Hi. Hi. Hello there. Hey, buddy. My hey, name buddy. is RL. We know. We're aware. Are yeah. you? Yeah. Ha, that's a little bit of an RL pun. Are you happy? with your current cable set up. We do not have one. So no. <laughs> Interesting. Do not sell me cable, RL. Do not. Well, what are you guys up to? We just read Monster Blood. Oh, you know what? I happen to know a little bit about that Monster Blood. I bet you can't, I bet you can't guess why. I can't guess why. I, I wait, let me, let me take one guess. Okay. Did you also read Monster Blood? Well, I did. As I wrote it. How does that work? It it actually, you know what? It's funny you say that. It doesn't. <laughs> yes, exactly. By law, I was not allowed to look at the book as I was writing. We You're can decided, tell. That's, and we have, the, that's the price that you pay. Which is why we have to ask you, what the fuck did you think you were writing about? I was writing a very in-depth critique of capitalism. 
Intriguing. Indeed intriguing. Let me explain. Monster blood is a, is obviously a representation of the market and its pressure of capital upon normal human beings. If you'll notice, everything that happens in this book is predicated by the need to acquire commodity. <laughs> Take, for instance, the fact that the inciting incident of this entire story is the fact that the mother is trying to go down to Atlanta to purchase a home. For that, she has to forego her entire family unit. Assuage Evan's fear. She gives him what? Ten dollars. Yeah. What does he do with that ten dollars? He purchases monster blood. The thing I'm trying to get at here is that monster blood is capital, consistently growing and engulfing everything in the entirety of the neighborhood. Everyone wants it. Everyone cares about it. But there is no way for Evan to deal with the intense pressure of having to live with the weight of all of capitalism crushing him down. He even tries to return it, but you cannot return the system to which you are already a party. I have a question. You have an answer. <laughs> Thank God. So uh, this story takes place in the year, I believe, 1993, correct? Or does it? I th does it? It might. Okay. Oh, please. T take, taking that into account and assuming that what you're saying is true and that the... How could it not be true? I'm R.L. Stein. Monster Blood itself. R.L. stands for Real Literature Stein. <laughs> So if Monster Blood is 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 capitalism, uh -huh. it, it, it's it's a a monetary uh, slime sludge, right? An ever expanding and ever engulfing force that corrupts all living human bodies. So, yes, capitalism. Okay. So if if in the book it grows to be about the size of, I don't know, let's say like a VW bug in my head, right? Uh -huh. Taking inflation into account. In the year 2020, how big would that monster blood be now? I'm glad you asked. At this point, the monster blood would be so large, it would actually be easier to say the things the monster blood isn't. Is monster blood my uh, my dad's dog, Onyx? It was. Until. Uh, until. Until it became the monster blood. Oh, no. <laughs> I know. It's real spooky. <laughs> what about Danielle's student loan debt? Oh, that's mostly monster blood. <laughs> Yes. Mm. I've been saying what, for years. Okay, but 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 what about cowboy? Yeah, what about cowboy or Our big adorable. fat cat cowboy? What does cowboy eat, if not monster blood? That's why he's a 40-pound house cat. That's that true. does make sense. All right, that makes sense. All right, shit, you got us. Yeah, R.L. Stein, since you bring up Nintendo in pretty much every book I've read so far, can you name one Nintendo game for me, your favorite, if possible? Oh. Uh. Meh. <laughs> 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 you're, you're, you're bleeding. Your nose is bleeding. You're, you're breaking up? Oh, oh, look at that. Urgent cable emergency. <laughs> I got to go, you guys, but it's been real fun talking about my seminal work and critique of capitalism. Monster blood. Have a good day. All right. Bye. Oh, he just jumped out the window. Also. Wait, wait. Guys, I'm back. Hi. Oh. How's it been going? Were you gone? You were, I was. There, you were gone way, way less than you usually are when you go to our bathroom. Yeah, well, I had way less to do in there. <laughs> I'd like to read a passage. Uh, it's at the end of chapter six and uh, beginning of chapter seven. Uh, he was about to leave when something caught his eye. It was a blue can about the size of a can of soup. He read the faded label, monster blood. And I'm going to skip the next line, but I'm going to get the last line. He turned to the store owner standing in the doorway, his dark eyes wide with anger. What are you doing back here? He bellowed. And then my favorite part of this entire book is the start of chapter seven. Evan gripped the leash, pulled trigger close and said, how much is this? He asked, holding up the can of monster blood. And the owner said, not for sale. Can I just say how happy I am that this book had my favorite thing that a store owner can do to me personally, Jojo, is when I try to buy something and they, they tell me it's not for sale. I fucking love that. I want, it's What's your next move? Yeah, what is my next move at that point? <laughs> Who knows better? You are the store owner. Excuse me, shopkeep. This shelf. Not for sale. Might I not be able to purchase this whole shelf? We don't like you. Mistake. Shouldn't be out here in the wrong bin. Wrong. Oh, well, show me the shelf bin. The shelves are in the back reserved for accepted customers. You, sir, are an unaccepted customer. If anything, I am the most acceptable customer there is. And my little friend, American Express, would like to have a conversation with your management. We don't take American Express. Well, yeah. I, well okay. Then I, I, American Express has a pretty good friend named Diners Club who would also like to have a chat 
<laughs> and you see, this is the problem with customers. They don't understand that American Express, we don't take it because they charge too much interest on the precious. Let's go. Okay, wait, let's cut ahead. You're in the break room now. <laughs> let's cut ahead in this scene. All right. All I've right. tried. I've tried relentlessly to buy a shelf. <laughs> <laughs> this is, it's, it's 93, so you can smoke indoors still. It's fine. Hey, boss, what was up with that guy earlier? I don't know. What a piece of shit. I told him to get the fuck out, and he wouldn't leave. We had to sick the dog on him. You mean old Rufus? Yeah, Rufus. He could be feisty. You kick him in the butt, Yeah. he'll he'll go. Yeah. You sick Rufus on me one time, though. Yeah, I know, so don't fuck with me. I just wanted to buy a shelf, boss. We're going out of business, boss, because you keep you keep stopping us whenever we try to buy shelves. I mean, just trying to help you out. We're here at the Shelf Emporium, boss. You you named this store the Shelf Emporium. It was the Emporium of Shelves. When, when I was hired, you said we get a twenty percent discount on all shelves. If there's a shelf out on the floor that we want, we can pull it so customers can't get it. If a shelf falls off the truck, then probably the truck had some kind of accident. Yeah. But then if we get that shelf in the store, then it can be one of ours as like an employee's gift. My children. That pa, pa. Boss, boss slash pa, you said that we you couldn't pay us when we started working here at the Shelf Emporium. And we decided to work here based entirely on our love of shelves and our love of you, pa. Yeah, we said we would take all compensation in the form of love, hugs, and shelves, pa. And we've gotten neither the first two, and here we are, hat in hand, trying to get the third. My hat's pretty big. It could fit lots of shelves in it, pa. Lots of shelves. Well, when you... I'm so hungry, pa. I haven't had a shelf to eat in weeks. <laughs> Once you bring me real sons, <laughs> maybe I'll sell you a shelf. Can't restock love. <laughs> huh, brother? <laughs> not if you never had it to begin with, you bastards. I'm holding the scanner to my heart and it's not beeping, pop. <laughs> I don't think that is, this is in stock in our system. <laughs> It's about lack of parental love, much like R.L. Stein's Ufra. My point is, I really love shopkeepers whose entire purpose in a story is to not sell things. Is to ineffectually stop the plot from happening. Yeah, that was his whole purpose. But the other thing, though, and this is what I really love, is he couldn't come up with a good reason. Well, he came up with lots of reasons, but none no, of them were the good. The, no. first, the first is worst, and that's what he said. He said, you can't sell. I can't sell this to you. It's yeah. too old. It's like, oh, shit. It's bread? You can't sell it? Is it like bread? This is day-old blood. <laughs> it's fu I'm going to give it to the ducks to make big ducks. It <laughs> big ducks. I want big ducks. I will buy this day-old blood. Heck, I just I get gas on the way to work. I get a pack of cigarettes. A little bit of monster blood for little, lunch. Just a little monster. Just yeah. a dab. Just, just a, a dab. dab of blood. It comes in one of those containers on the like the to-go containers for the Nutella. You know, just get a little Nutella and some of those like breadsticks. You get some breadsticks to, to dip in the monster yeah. blood. So you can feed it to ducks <laughs> in case they're not down with just eating straight up monster blood. And then you got big ducks. Oh, God, I really want Hickey those big ducks. ducks. My favorite thing to do with monster blood is give it to big to crows because right. then they become big crows. And if you feed crows, they give you gifts and big crows give you cars. And the, yes, also the, the longer you go, the bigger the gift they get you because they themselves become bigger. And the bigger the crows get. Yeah, they get so big. They start bringing you people made of metal. <laughs> And then you can ride them. That's true. true. I would say that the Eagles in the Lord of the Rings films potentially probably came from a monster blood situation. To get a bigger, to get, if you give a mouse some monster blood, mm -hmm. you're going to need to get a bigger cat. Yeah. So yeah. you got to give the cat some monster blood to eat that. Yes. Then if you give the cat monster blood, you got to give a dog the monster blood to eat the cat. This is getting a little A little dark. old lady is going to eat all of these animals. <laughs> okay, so nothing matters. All right. So that's my favorite passage all in right. this whole book. Okay. Is the is the man who refuses yes. to sell things in his store where he sells things. Uh, Danielle, I do believe that you have all right, all a right. passage. Are you ready for this car to turn all the way around? Because I am. Are we going back home or going back to Disneyland? Why are we in a car? I don't want to be in a car. I want to be doing our podcast. Good. Get the fuck out. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> I'll see you later. <laughs> that was easy, man. I should be a shopkeeper. <laughs> okay. Let me let me tell you a story about young Evan, who is on the cusp of manhood. And so, allow me to divulge something that perhaps you, as biased male readers, well, hold on, cannot immediately recognize. Now hold on there. 
What? You got a problem? You got a problem? You want to you want to mansplain to me? Well, I'd love to, but I need to know where the passage is. And so do the people listening to this. Yeah. I would love to mansplain to you if you would woman explain to me where this passage is. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right. This is going to be the beginning of chapter 12. Oh, OK. Chapter 12. Yes. And uh, if you have an illegally downloaded version of the book, that's wrong. You should probably go get a real version and yeah, not look right. on page support, 34. Support the Steinman. OK. All right. Here we go. Chapter 12. Beginning of chapter 12, Evan pulled out a handful of the green gunk. Weird, he exclaimed. It's expanding. That was me trying to do a voice crack. He said, it's definitely growing. I guess so, Andy exclaimed. It grew right out of the can. Hey, it's not so cold anymore, Evan said. He balled it up and tossed it to Andy. It's really warm, she agreed. Weird. She tried to toss it back to him, but it stuck to her palm. It's getting sticky, she reported. Yes. So can I just say, why is it that all of R.L. Stein's books are so fucking horny? Right? Yeah. This is what I want to know. This one is especially horny also because it gives both of its main characters more nuanced, like, a, not, not adult personalities, but like they definitely interact in a way that's flirtatious. Oh, for sure. <laughs> like blatantly flirt, not like so much innocent, like, oh, maybe, uh, maybe. But like very much just like, you want to come play oh, with no. my monster blood? Exactly. So let's talk about Evan. This young man is very confused about his feelings. He's got kind of a crush on a girl, but he's kind of scared of her. And he kind of wants to play with her, but he's not sure the monster blood begins its emergence like a spring cicada this is this is the part where we have to reveal to you that danielle is going to be providing a link to her homeopathic medicine <laughs> store if you'd like to buy producer danielle's crystal necklaces you can conform just... of compo composed of crystalline pure crystalline monster blood yeah. gathered wait gathered at the cusp of puberty. Mm. <laughs> you are exactly yeah. right. Now, hold on a second. Danielle, are you telling me that Monster Blood and the raw sexual fury that was unleashed in this book by R.L. Stein for children? Correct. Do, are you telling me that you have managed to get the sense memory of that raw sexual fury in this bottle of Dasani? Are you telling me that I can have that? Yes. That I can drink that? That I can have and drink yes. that? Yes. Just but, let's uh, bathe in that awkward adolescence moment. <laughs> <laughs> Just, oh, it feels good. Now, Danielle, what are the many physical maladies that I could cure with the da with McManus brand monster blood, homeopathic, would it be juice? I don't know what to call this stuff. Miracle cure? My miracle cure is the opposite of monster blood, right? So it's like um, unicorn gas. Oh, okay, okay. So the monster blood, it, it, it sucks. It sucks real hard. Which, bad for the cancer. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you want to you want to stop. You want to stop touching it. You want to stop being around it, but you can't because it's good for the humors. Yeah, it's sticky. You have awkward adolescence. I have your cure. Boom. <laughs> okay. Does it cure earaches? I don't know. Will it get my parents back together? Correct. And also available in a sniffable. Oh, oh, the sniffable is what I need, especially for those long flights. Essential oil. <laughs> It's essential. You might, you monster might not oil. see the oil, but it's there. <laughs> I can feel it working already. <laughs> yes, what is it? Okay, wait, hold on, squad. <laughs> what does monster blood smell like? I'm other other than. We, the what does jizz smell like, Joe? I don't, you know what? It's one of those things where it's like, it's unidentifiable, but you know what it is. You know what I mean? You know jizz when you sniff it. You know when you sniff it. And if that's what monster blood smell, you know what? You know what just popped into my head? Glue sticks. That's what just <laughs> popped into my head. I, I, Glue I, sticks. I have a distinct memory of the smell of gack, and that is what I attribute monster blood to a thousand percent. So at this point now, Danielle, and I, I, I do want to blame you for this, but I really can't. This is now twice we've discovered quite possibly one of the horniest passages in children's literature. Two is a coincidence. 
third time is a pattern. And then we're going to have to jump to some other book series. I'm thinking Babysitter's Club. I'm sorry. What is bad about the sensuousness of discovering one's burgeoning adulthood? Of two 12-year-olds. Of two 12-year-olds. <laughs> Distinctly named as 12-year-olds. They're not 17 going on 18. Danielle? Yes. It was a beautiful passage. Thank you. <laughs> I've got more. No, I I just mean uh, if you need any more sensual reading. Oh, there's fucking buttloads of it in this <laughs> stupid book. You know what I also pictured Monster Blood of? Remember the goop in Ghostbusters 2? <gasps> ectoplasm. No, not ectoplasm. Oh, it was the, the um, pure liquid negative emotion. Like it, the liquid negative emotion, which is the slime. Did he is that? Vigo. Yeah. You were like the buzzing of flies to him. Are we talking about Candyman? I'm lost. No, Candyman was... About bees. He was about, well, it was about slavery and the legacy of bees. systemic racism. Bees. Okay. <laughs> sure, Jeff. <laughs> bees. I thought it was about candy. You're thinking of the song. You sing the song Candyman three times and the candy yeah, man shows I, up. I just played it on a loop over the movie Candyman like you do with like uh, that Pink Floyd album and <laughs> Wizard of Oz. <laughs> It, it does. It works surprisingly well. It Who can matches. take the sunshine? Exactly. Sprinkle it with oh dew. Oh, my God. Guys, if you want to have an experience, oh. Cover it with chocolate and then kill the plantation owner. You're right. Handyman. You're right. That's about how it goes. Yeah. Twitcher Jeff. Yeah. So. Um, Lo lover of books. Yes. Eater. Of books. Of books. Talked about. Probably need to stop him from boiling them books, huh? Look, they, I can't burn them legally anymore. But you can drink them. I can boil them. And chew them. And chew them down. I can get them into some sort of meal-like substance. Everyone says books are good for you. They're fibrous. But no one wants to do the work of making a delicious book stew. Yeah. So right. You oh think God, that so Blue Apron is the thing that you want for your household. Have you considered Book Apron? Yes. Uh, <laughs> I send you a number of uh, yeah. recipes, organically <laughs> big books. From your, your local bookstore... Locally harvest from thrift stores in your neighborhood, I send you a series of books that you yourself can boil and turn into some sort of mush. Guys, well, check it out. I decided I'm gonna I'm cooking us dinner tonight, and what I have on on sampling for us, oh, yeah. war, war and peace that I put I put into a quiche. Whoa! War and, war, war and quiche. War and quiche. <laughs> it's delicious. Uh, my mom used to make the best war and quiche. <laughs> I've got a bit of I got a bit of book to read here. Oh, okay, but before we get to the end passage, I had I had just one more yep. middle passage. Now, Danielle, I do believe, uh, based on the the listings of our panel, hi, we're at a book literary convention thing. Yes. I know that I have a name conference. It's intended. I was looking at the agenda, and it says that you have. Mm. A second passage for us. Why, I am so glad, Joe the Moderator, that you brought that up. I am jo Jojo the Moderator. Yes. I'm so sick of Jojo the Moderator being Jojo moderate. has He's in mod. Daniel's pocket. It's ridiculous. Hey, 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 hey. Who wants tenure? Yeah, exactly. Is it you? Maybe you should. Because it's not going to be with that attitude. Exactly. I. You know what? Or that AA. I'm going to beat you up behind the hotel later. Now, Danielle, uh, if you could please read your right. wonderful passage. Where so is it located? Is the beginning of chapter 19. Oh, excellent. I'm actually right there. And it is... Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, God, no. It is the fabled bath scene, as they call it. It is fable. Yes. And I... Aesop wrote about it. <laughs> I don't know enough Aesop's tales to make... <laughs> oh, no. He meant Aesop Rock, the musician. <laughs> I don't get that either, so I'm gonna... Yep. Cool. Yep. All right. So... He sank into the ooze, his arms and legs flailing, trying to lift himself away. But the sticky substance was sucking him down, pulling him with surprising force. His whole body seemed to be held by it, stuck as in cement. And now it was quivering up bubbling silently, rising to his face. I'm going to suffocate, he realized. It's trying to choke me. The warmth of it spread across his body, invaded his chest, his legs, 
his throat. Again. <laughs> R.L. Stein with these horny, Seriously, horny dude. books. Like, goddamn. Goddamn. <sighs> Ew. I didn't. It's awful. And also, can I just say, made me think of the floor is lava. I don't know why. Standing in a bathtub trying not to fall in. Yeah, I guess it's that. <laughs> That's why I'm picturing that Ghostbusters 2 slime because there was a scene at Ghostbusters 2 where it comes down out of the tap. In the bathtub. Oh, yeah. that's and it right. The and, and, and the bath, and the thing attacks you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder. This came out. Ghostbusters Two came out before this. I wonder if Arl Stein is a bit of a <gasps> an Ivan Reitman find. Oh man. no! You think? I think this is an IP infringement. I oh, my, think this is. Whoa, 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 guys, guys, guys! Are we? Are we really thinking? I got now. Okay. Let's get out of the. Let's get out of the goofs for a second. Mm -hmm. Are we really thinking that Arl Stein ripped off I, Ivan Reitman? And Harold Ramis, rest in peace, with his peace. awesome slime attack in the bathtub? Well, the opinion of Ghostbusters 2 was not as high as that of Ghostbusters 1. That's true. So either one, the potential that he did not because he himself was not a fan of it, or two, he did because he thought no one else would make the connection because no, no one, one would. So you're it. thinking that perhaps R.L. Stein, with his horrifically horny book, saturated the market. Mm -hmm. with goop and therefore all the money that could have been spent on watching the ghostbusters fight all their ghosts yeah. was was spent on rl stein's monster blood where all the monster blood was yeah much so like when i as a youth i saw a wonderful scene that was very inspiring about a man who goes in the water and then a little fish swims up his nerds by which I mean Dick. And you're speaking, of course, of this of the amazing film Anaconda. Anaconda. Yeah, that's and I wrote the best book out of that because I was like, no one's going to see this movie, and if they do, they're not going to remember. <laughs> Can I just say that it's wonderful that we both thought the exact <laughs> same movie? Anaconda. I think classic. Jeff is a little stunned. <laughs> Goddamn classic. I blocked that memory, and you should unblock. It's great. But I I, I have to agree with with JoJo's idea because it falls in line with the concept that R.L. Stein himself told us about and that in a free market, you can oh, divert shit. away. Oh, shit. All right, all right, listen. We can't just academicize <laughs> this horrific discovery away wow. because now I'm understanding that R.L. Stein is taking slime food out of Harold Ramis Jr.'s mouth. Yeah. We need to get the legal department on the phone. I mean, that's what capitalism is. is maybe? We are being fiscally irresponsible readers by not calling legal. I'm going to dial them up right now. Right. now boop, boop. Yep. You know what? Yeah. Fucked up. Didn't dial nine. Oh, Boop. Yeah. Oh, damn it. It's in office. You got it. It's in office. Oh, it's yeah. You can't just call their extension because they all have the it's same really extension. <laughs> all the extensions are zero, zero, one. I set up our phone yeah. system bad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, legals, legals on, legals on the horn. Right. Hey, uh, uh, hey, legal. Uh, this is uh, this is this is Jojo and uh, Danielle and Jeff. We're in the booth. How you doing? God, it's four fifty-five on a Friday, man. What do you want? We shouldn't have called them on a Friday, uh, dude. It's important. I know it's important. It's okay. You guys okay, are on speaker. I can hear you. So, I can no, speak sorry, sorry. Know. Listen, uh, we we we're feel as if bad. God. That we're saying anything bad. We're 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 uh, we're we're reading through Monster of Blood right now. Also, okay. we're paying you. We are paying you so an exorbitant sum. Actually, I'm contracted out from a separate agency. Uh, okay, for the okay, legal that's purposes great. Right, oh, oh, you are contracted by. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Is that right? That is right. He's actually contracted by a separate agency. If we don't, if we treat him poorly, we are going to catch hell from this from upstairs. Oh, oh, they can come for me. I know. Th well, that's the thing, right? You're not on probation, but I am. Four fifty-seven guys. Okay, okay, hey, listen. Right. So here's the right. thing. It turns out um, we think that R.L. Stein may have ripped off a huge portion of monster blood from Ghostbusters 2. Uh, uh, specifically the slime part that went into the sexy bathtub and almost grabbed somebody. Do you, uh, is there a legal, do we have, do we have a legal obligation to, to deal with this? I mean, what's the IP on sexy bathtub slime? And what's the statute of limitations on, um, intellectual jizz theft? Jizz, jizz, jizz. Yeah, it's jizz theft. All right. Is there anyone else in the room with you? 
He's in the room with me. I'm, well, yeah, I mean, we're, well, we're I'm in the same you're, room. You're in the room together. Well, uh, you should well, be more specific. <laughs> Aside from the... Technically in the same room, six feet apart, obviously, wearing masks. Yeah. Hey, guys, hold on. Yeah, they're fucking idiots. I don't know what the hell is going on. Look, I know I know it's TGI Fridays tonight. I know. It's Friday, Jerry, I know. He is so professional. I gotta say, he's incredibly professional. This motherfucker wants to get a margarita. All right, well, so... Of course he does. Here's what I need you guys to do. I need you to take down some numbers, okay? Okay. All right, I need you to call Susan. Susan's up in marketing, right? Okay. Okay, Susan is gone. She only works on Tuesdays. Tuesdays and Thursdays. So well, why do I call Tuesday. her then now? So, okay, l- listen to me. Like, I'm, I'm dehydrated right now. I'm supposed to have margaritas in my mouth five minutes ago, and I'm here talking to you, Yahoo. So, anyways, call Susan. She's in marketing. Her number is 555 555 extension 400. Okay. On Tuesday, you call. You hey, said, Joe, Jeff. You know what's a really hard occupation? Being a lawyer. It was hard to get through two years of law school. Okay, okay, listen, listen. You got, you got to understand. She's been, she's been pounding the sangria since we started this podcast. Yeah, I wish I was there. I wish I was doing the same thing. Am I talking? Yeah, about listen, we're, uh, <laughs> listen. We're up here. We're stressed. We're trying to get this episode out on time so that the guy upstairs can can be okay with it. So call Susan on Tuesday. Yeah, call Susan on what? Tuesday. Tell her. Okay, so no, here's no, what you no, want to no, do. You, you call Susan. She's drunk. That's why we pay you. She's very, very That's trash. That's why we pay you. Here's, what, here's, here's what's going to happen. Fuck both of you. No, but how, but how are we going to get justice shit. for writing? We're trying to make art. We're trying to make big art. I'm going through it. I'm going through a tunnel, guys. Ty, I, no, you're, no, you're, you're, the, no, you're, you're not. The, he's gone. What he's a, gone. what He disconnected. Uh, so, okay. So great. So great. Arl Stein's a thief. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ivan Reitman Jr. can't eat. Well, yeah, but also I'm a little tipsy. So who is uh, who is losing? Very successful. Not me. Very successful passage. This one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was an absurd goof. Yeah. That, was, that went places. <laughs> that was that was actually bonkers. I kind of just I became the character and got irritated <laughs> and, I got, <laughs> and got out of the bit. Jeff doesn't have to act to be irritated with us. I was just I was like <laughs> I'm thinking like uh, I could go. I, I do gotta say our scene work is getting much better. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're, we're figuring it out. I I definitely there. embodied that min- that character. That was really good. Um, do we have another passage? So. Up until the end of the book, mm-hmm. um, we think that the story is simply about a young man's um, adventure through adolescence. It seems very rote. Yeah. yeah. And and yeah. dealing with... And, and, I, and I said this to Danielle as she was reading it gently to me uh, in bed last night. As I do. As she does. As she does. Is that the, the horrors of the monster blood throughout the, the book are, are, are present but not frightening necessarily. It's not doing anything scary. The, f- the fear comes from, it's almost like it, where the fear is more so from the peers. The, young, the world. The is world, yeah. The, the financial struggles, having to move, the twins who are trying to beat the shit out of you. So it was quite wild when we come to the end of the book. Oh, boy. And what chapter are we on? Chapter 26. Wait Ooh, that's, for this. That's way deep in the it, yeah. you guys. Mm. Wait for it. Oh, it's good. So the end of chapter 25 Things are going off. Aunt Catherine pointing to the children. We enter chapter 26. She's pointing to Andy. Andy, was Aunt Catherine accusing Andy? Evan spun around to confront Andy, but Andy turned too, and Evan realized immediately that his aunt wasn't pointing at Andy. She was pointing past Andy to Sarah Beth. Which, by the way, (sighs) this is the first time I realized that Sarah Beth is not hyphenated. Nope. And I am deeply troubled by that. Yes, it's all smushed together, just yes. like... Oh! So Sarah Beth, just side note, is the black cat. Daniel got stolen by ghosts, everybody. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Standing in the doorway in the living room, the black cat hissed and arched her back, her yellow eyes flaring at Catherine. She did it! She's the one! Catherine declared, pointing frantically. The enormous glob of green monster blood, all capitalized, by the way, bounced back retreated a step, and was stung by Catherine's words. How dare you? Sh- shadows shifted inside the glob as it quivered, <laughs> catching the light filtering in through the living room window. Evan stared at the cat, then turned his eyes to Andy. <laughs> she shrugged. 
<laughs> her face frozen in horror and bewilderment. This, this, this chick is crazy, huh? And Catherine is crazy, Evan thought sadly. Aw. Poor, poor guy. She's totally lost it. She isn't making any sense. None of this makes sense. She's the one, Catherine repeated. The cat hissed in response. The glob bounced in place, carrying the unmoving beamer. Beamer? Beamer. I said beamer, but I think it could be either. I think it's beamer. Beamer. Beamer, beamer brothers inside. Oh, look, Evan cried to Andy as the black cat suddenly raised up on its hind legs. All eyes were on the cat as it rose up, stretched, and grew. And as it grew, it changed its shape, became human. Now we're sexy talking. At no point. Hang on. And Sarah Beth was now a young woman with fiery red hair and pale skin and yellow eyes. The same yellow eyes that had haunted Evan since he'd arrived. The young woman was dressed in a swirling black gown down to her ankles. So, if you could change your feet, if you could change your feet, if you could change your feet, <laughs> would you? So, up until this point, if you could in the turn book, a child's toy into a giant sludge monster, would you? Would you? I'm sorry, Jeff, please go on. <laughs> Danielle and I seem to have been cursed. It might as well have been that. It might as well have been you two showing up in this book at the end. <laughs> What's up, guys? We made the monster blood. Okay. Never has have I read a book that pivoted so hard on its wow, plot on its yeah. plot reveal. Just drags it out forever. And then in the space of two sentences, boom, cats a person. Yeah. Also a witch. And also a witch. Merida. Also, yeah. So so Evil Merida. The I read this chap I read this part of the chapter because that is a big reveal. That, it's that's a big reveal. Sarah Beth. It is the it, spoilers. It is the spoilers. Reveal, spoilers. Spoilers for Monster Blood spoilers. <laughs> if some if before if you started reading Monster Blood the first couple chapters and then someone said, Hey, spoilers, it's actually a witch you'd who's be like, a cat the entire time, you'd be like, Fuck you. Like, that's that, not real. It is a wonderful excuse though. For how? Okay. Um okay, let's just do a little exercise. Okay. Just to practice. Okay. okay? Jeff? Yeah. I want you to convince Danielle that you uh, got held up and that's why you couldn't get home in time. And when she presses you, because I know you're going to do that. Yes, I will. You do what comes natural. Okay. And go. Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm sorry. I'm still Dude, really again? Sweet. I'm sorry. I know. We look. I ordered dinner. I know. I paid for it with money and now it's cold I'm and I sorry. can't eat it because I can't eat cold food I and it's, uh, I can't eat it tomorrow because it'll be still cold tomorrow. Your medical condition, I'm fully aware. Believe me, I, we both went to the doctor. Look, it's not my fault. Cold. And here it comes. I really just, I, w I was trying to get home. I swear to God. That's what you want. I, but say. like I was driving and this... You won't believe this, just, but uh, okay, what? There, there was this black cat, and it, it crossed the street, right? And and and, and as I was and as I was watching it cross the street, I stopped. This cat somehow arched its back up. Duh, that's what cats do. What are we talking about? Well, this cat was arching its back up, but it was on its hind legs. Why did you I, try to kill a cat? No, I didn't try to kill it. I definitely was just Why watching was it, it arching its back at you if you weren't trying to kill it? You gotta it seal in, the deal, Jeff. You gotta seal the deal. It, in the scene. It, it 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 turned into a woman, Danielle. It turned into a woman. Oh come on! It asked me for a ride to the 7-Eleven because it had to get some gas because its car broke down, and let I me, said that sounds probably true. Let me ask. Was she naked? Well, I mean, was she I, prettier than me? Now, Jeff, I think you're losing control of the scene. I'm just saying. Uh, I'm just saying. I, I took her to get the gas, and then she was you like, "You took her to get gas." I just. She had her own gas can. I, I bought. Well, I bought the oh, gas I'm can sure for her. She had her own big gas can. I had twenty dollars on me, and I was just and like, you, you know what? And scene. Now, I dare say that that <laughs> was some fine acting, but I will say that the emotional tautness of the scene yeah. definitely leaned away from the cat right yes. away. Because it's not really about a cat, is it? Ma Master Jeffrey, why do you want to be an actor? <laughs> I believe in truth. <laughs> in, in, in by truth, I mean the truth of uh, uh, emotion. Um, the truth of, of history. Interesting. Yes. Yeah. Um, and, Interesting. Uh, and I believe that when when somebody tells you, no matter what the scene, I could be doing, you know, um, I could be doing Macbeth. Yes. You know, I could I could be doing one of Macbeth. one of the greats, right? Yes. Yes. And and if in the scene I'm 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 reading my script and, and I'm 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 wailing at the, the moon and my, my family is dead and, and I, I don't know how to deal with this. How do you and, and and my kingdom asks, you know, why, why did these hor horrific things happen? Yes, and if what, I what, tell what these, the if, reason? if I tell them that it was because a cat walked up to me, turned into a character from the film Brave by Disney and Pixar, yes. 
that nobody should second guess whether or not the truth of this scene is factual or not. The truth is oh, what wow. I make it. It is the oh emo- it is the emotional truth of the 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 anguish. What an yeah. artist! Not the literal truth that the author could think of no possible reason that monster blood exists other than witch. I just want to say that as Jojo, the person who's doing this podcast, we have all taken on different forms of crossing our legs as if we're doing inside the actor's studio. <laughs> like all of us, like as this yes. is happening. Yes. And I, I, hate to, my... I hate to step out of the goof for a moment, but, but I can't let that pass. No, that was definitely, we it's all went into, wild. A, into a mode. Do you think that when, when R.L. Stein said, which... <laughs> Do you think he went back and added witch stuff earlier? There is there witch there's stuff not really earlier? a lot of witch there's stuff. Ma- there's books on magic. Yeah, and, and it's like such a throwaway though. Yeah, there's books on magic and there's a cat. The the witch has been there as a cat the whole time for twenty plus years. Allegedly, doing what? I don't uh, know. What do cats do, Jeff? Well, it's if they Aunt cause Catherine, evil. If Aunt Catherine is like the the servant of this yeah. witch cat. Person. Where's that prequel, by the way? Where's the prequel? Where's also, that, where's that story? Yeah. There are just so many problems with the end. Oh my god. The the end would make perfect sense. Perfect sense if throughout the book you learned about a variety of misfortunes that occurred in town. Yeah. Like people going missing or other monstrous things happening because there, goats. nothing is attributed to a witch being in this town and Catherine being her servant. Like, is it just she can't open the canned food? What? Is that why she well, needs a person? If you had to turn it. OK, Jeff, now listen, you say that. But if you had to turn into a completely different life form to open a can. That's a lot of work. That's that a lot not, of work. I, mean, I would use witchly powers then. Your nature's perfect killing machine and you can't open a can. That is just an insult to life in all its forms. Yes. Yeah. I guess, I guess, what's Aunt Catherine going to do now? Well, she's a homeowner. She's 80. Well, she's <laughs> a homeowner. And so she's got assets. So, folks, we've, we've talked a lot about this, this, this book and its many wonders, Yeah. obviously. Yeah. But I think it's about time that we bring up some of the things that we didn't have time oh, to mention. Man, do I have many? Yeah. Uh, Twitter, Jeff. Can we talk about how Evan and Andy are frantically swapping out where the growing monster blood is going to live in a bathtub and a trash can? Why not just put it anywhere else and be done with it? Throw it in the river. Can we talk about the fact that the Beamer brothers are testicles? Can we talk about how the aunt cursed the monster blood knowing it was going to kill the children can we talk about that no one noticed how big the dog was <laughs> as big as a pony as big as a pony running around all muck mm-hmm. can we talk about how the only part that scared jeff in this whole story was when the beamer brothers beat up evan <laughs> can we talk about how when i was a freshman in high school <laughs> I myself was beaten up by a number of larger boys <laughs> who were twins. Who were twins. So many twins. Can we please, please talk about how at no point did anyone try to tell grown-ups what was going on in this town except for the one who literally was unable to hear? <laughs> Can we talk about how he did tell the one who was unable to hear, but then she was like, <laughs> whatevs. Can we talk about at what moment Aunt Catherine became Aunt Catherine instead of instead of Sarah Beth? And at why the monster blood like caused that to happen? Like what kind of molecular shindiggery happened? What are you talking yeah, about? What? Okay, okay. So Aunt Catherine is possessed by Sarah Beth. No. No. She well. Okay. Are we gonna <laughs> are we gonna argue semantics because we're she's not? Being well, no. We're just she's, she's not, a puppet. She's the puppet she's, of Sarah. She's been horrifically cursed. She's just like she's her servant. She's not like a puppet. Yeah, she's not like a like a, a she's like a familiar, but she's not like to her as Sarah puppet. I don't think which that she is. I don't think Sarah Beth is I don't think Sarah Beth is controlling her and making her do what she wants. I think she is like Pavlovian maybe. Yeah, but like I think that she knows that she like as she puts the dog outside cuz she knows that Sarah Beth doesn't want the dog inside. But I she's not like they're not 
Sarah Beth's not in her head or anything. Yeah, Sarah Beth is, is literally the cat. Is this about abusive relationships? I mean, yeah, uh, kind of. Yeah. Sure. Wow. Can we talk about abusive relationships? <laughs> Can we talk about how Danielle thought that Sarah Beth was puppeting Aunt Catherine? Can we talk about how the end of this book, Danielle believed that Aunt Catherine sent the spirit of evil Sarah Beth into her cat? Yes. Can we? Can we? Actually, no. We are out of time yeah. to talk about monster blood any further. <laughs> we are contractually <laughs> obligated to stop talking about it now. I have been informed by our legal department that uh, we have to stop. Now... And I, I have to do this um, because I think it's important. When it comes to Goosebumps, we are not the only game in town. Sounds dubious. Both in terms of, of critical thought and ability. Whoa, 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 whoa. I know, I know. It's, it's a dangerous thing I've just said. I, I don't, I don't want to open the floodgates for everyone to start making their own Goosebumps podcast. But I will say that we found Geesebumps with little to no effort. <laughs> we so. can't trademark the name. But we definitely found it with little to no effort. It's definitely ours. It's definitely something we found, and we were not worried when we thought of it months before the first episode <laughs> came out. Because if someone was going to think of it other than us, they would have. Uh, my point is, we are not the only ones thinking critically about Goosebumps, and I would like to read for all of you a work of criticism by a fellow, a scholar of Goosebumps. Mm. A, go a, go a goose? Goose scholar. A goose finder? Scholar bump. Oh. A philanthropist. <laughs> a smarty bump. A smarty bump. Okay, a fellow smarty bump. No. This is from this is on Monster Blood and it is by Becky. This was 5 years ago. Becky rated this particular goose bump. It's on Goodreads. You can look it up if you like. 1 out of 5. Oh dear. That's rough. Oh Becky. Here is her uh her quote. Uh okay then. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Look. I know these are supposed to be for kids, but they should also be good stories. And this one was just not. It was the kind of book where, if it was aimed at adults, would never have seen the light of day. It was formulaic, all over the place, oh, repetitive, oh so conveniently introduced characters. Yeah. And the ending was so ridiculously out of left field, I sat there reading it with this expression on my face. And then it's the picture of Kevin Hart. You know the one. <laughs> One. I don't know what she's talking about. Because really, really, what the hell was that? I'll tell you what that was. That was shit. <laughs> wow. Holy fuck. Hang on. Now I think we're going to get into the mind of this critic. Ooh. There's I, more. I love her, by the way. I like, I'm in. Dear R.L. Stein and Dean Coots. <laughs> I'm sorry. Was this a thing appended? I want you guys to know that I read up to this part and then no further. Okay. This is all new. I knew, it was, I knew it was fine. This, this is, is all new territory. Dogs are not people. <laughs> Life. Say it with me. Dogs are not people. But let's talk about dogs for a minute here. This dog, Trigger, mm. is supposed to be a 12-year-old Cocker Spaniel. To clarify, that's a 12 years old in people years. So he'd be a senior citizen in dog years. Eligible for discount treats and early bird dinners. <laughs> I like her. <laughs> She's got sass. Wow. We're supposed to assume the dog and the kid, both 12, are lifelong amigos, right? But I have a problem with that theory. In order for certain things to happen in this illogical and poorly written excuse for a story, Oof. the dog has to meet certain criteria. Oh. Why? Because the author was not imaginative to not require it. Dog Here are the things. He had to be disobedient, mm. and he has to be past the point of a possible growth spurt. It's what like this results in, besides a massive eye twitch for me, oh. is a supposedly elderly dog who acts like a puppy. <laughs> the dog described in this book was not a 12-year-old dog. Stein just didn't have any other techniques in his repertoire Ooh. to make an old sweepy Whoa. dog disobey and misbehave enough to make things plausible. Though I'd say... He failed anyway. Every Whoa. dog in every book so far has been disobedient. Yes. So That's why did he need to misbehave? So he'd eat the monster blood. I have protests because what? I... Do you remember Bubble Yum? I do remember Bubble Yum. Cotton candy flavor? I do love it. I had a dog intercept me in the process of, of, of eating a piece of cotton candy Bubble Yum. Uh-huh. I chased said dog. I opened said jaws. Said jaws. Said Jaws? Said it was a shark dog. I opened said Jaws dog, and that gum was gone. Want to know why Trigger is disobedient, everybody? Bad training? Hang on. The idiotic characters in this book plead with him and ask him to do or not do things or reason with him instead of sit and it stay. It the 90s. It's oh just, God. wait here five minutes, Trigger, while I run inside the shop and get ice cream. So 
What, one last thing about the dog. This person really fucking could not handle this yeah. dog. This person was not alive in the 90s. That uh, is a cat person. So after he eats the monster blood and starts to grow, Evan takes him to the vet for a checkup. My only thought here is Evan has $8. <laughs> <laughs> his mom gave him ten dollars for a for a two week trip, which could go longer. Who knows? And he spent two dollars on monster blood, so there's eight left. I recently took my cats in for a checkup, and the exam bill alone was fifty dollars each. Yeah, that's true. We just took that's ours in. Can confirm? Yes. Yeah, I can confirm. I'm going to call bullshit on the fact that any vet would examine an otherwise healthy looking giant dog. <laughs> let alone run a gamut of tests looking for hormone abnormalities or other issues for free. Because I'm fairly sure he still had $8 post-vet, especially now without an adult present. There are curious, benevolent veterinarians out there. How could this have gone down in reality town? Call your mom, kid. Your dog looks fine. Is there anything really wrong with him? Your mom can make an appointment and have him checked out. The ending was ridiculous. A lame cop-out so that nobody real in the story had to be bad or get hurt. Lame. So lame. I'm done. I don't think that reading these as an adult was such a great idea. I fucking disagree. I mean, come on. I I love it great. It is what makes it great because I at no point I at no point caught up with the the raw horny <laughs> capitalistic premise of this book even thought about the fact that yeah dogs yeah dogs right dogs right. we did mention it while we were reading it i was like why are they telling the dog with human words to do a thing that it definitely doesn't understand and this is the key this is why we need to see all of the rl stein oeuvre this is why all the smarty bumps out there are so important yes because dogs are a crucial element to an rl stein story because who else is he gonna fridge exactly mm. and sometimes he even chooses not to fridge them the thing about rl stein if it's if it's child let it horny <laughs> if it's dog <laughs> let it die Die. Let it die. <laughs> or, <laughs> dogs. or a dog is literally in these books so far the deus ex machina. Every time. It is either the thing that reveals the great plot point. Yep. Find a doggy, pick it up. It's dead. It died. <laughs> <laughs> Find a cat, pick it up. It's a witch. It's a witch. F <laughs> Wait. Hickory dickory dog. <laughs> it's dead. <laughs> Eeny, meeny, miny, witch. It's no. a cat. <laughs> it's a cat. Um, wait. Do you know the mean old witch? It, the witch old witch. It's a cat. It's the cat witch. It's the cat. These and more can be found in R.L. Stein's book of, <laughs> book of writing. Big book of writing. R.L. Stein's big book of literary magic. And Every book ever in this one book. You want a bunch of books in one book? R.L. Stein's got it. R.L. Stein's got the books and all the many passages for reading you need to know how to read and write good books. Well, guys, I think we've come as far as we can. <laughs> Thank you to the band Dog Party for the use of our theme song, Bad Dream, off of the album Hit and Run. Great song, great band, great album. You can check them out at dogpartylive.com and dogparty.bandcamp.com. <laughs> Danielle. Yes. Give us that final passage. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> With pleasure. Did you say a final passage? The, the final passage. The final passage. You know that. You know our show. Oh, yeah. Can I, uh, like, ask one more small favor? Andy asked. Yeah, sure. Evan replied, curious. Well, it's going to sound strange, Andy said reluctantly. But can I, uh, can I have a little bit of the monster blood that's left, you know, sort of as a memento or something. Sure, okay with me, Evan said. They both turned their eyes to where it had come to rest on the carpet. Hey, Andy cried in surprise. It was gone. <laughs> <laughs> it went to monster blood too. Exactly. It went to high school. Uh, it's like the end credits, like monster blood will be back <laughs> in monster blood too. <laughs> And the movie. This has been Geese Bumps, a Did You Mean Goosebumps podcast. I am Danielle, a PhD. I'm Jojo, a PhD. I'm Jeff, a uh, pending. <laughs> and don't forget, smash cut. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. Just like somebody I used to know.